everyone. My name is Divya. I'm representing the Keras team at Google. I'll be talking about diffusion models, what can be done with them, and how to enable them using Keras. So what are diffusion models and why should you care? Historically, you could generate fake shoe pictures. These aren't really real shoes, not particularly interesting. You could learn the latent space of a data set. The top row is a real hand digit, uh, handwritten digits. The bottom row is not real handwritten digits, but it's generated from the latent representation of the above row, which is basically a very compressed format of the images. Or you could generate deep fake videos. On the left is Obama talking, and on the right is a synthesized video of Obama talking. All of this is quite interesting, but nothing really useful, and it was really difficult to control the output until in Jan 2021, OpenAI launched DALI 2. It's a very powerful and popular image generative model. This was the first mainstream text to image model. This is the first prompt they launched it with an astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic style. It's pretty incredible. It's cool, but the model was still closed source. Nobody could really use it. They do have an API that you can use, especially now they've opened it a little bit more. But recently, uh, about two months ago, Stable Diffusion was launched. It is a fully open source text to image model released by a startup called Stability AI. It's generously licensed, and it works very similar to DALI 2, more similar to another model called ImageGen which is also not open sourced. Uh, here's an example. You can provide a text prompt, something like Paradise Cosmic Beach, and the model outputs this image of a Paradise Cosmic Beach. I have a few more examples here to kind of give you an idea of how some of these outputs look like. These are pretty cool, completely artificially generated images. Uh, this is a gentleman author in a 19th century portrait. Uh, this is a cute ma magical flying dog fantasy art drawn by Disney concept artists. This is a pencil sketch of robots playing poker. You can even see the poker chips in there. So this is pretty cool, but that's not all. You can also do image to image workflows guided by text. So here you can see that the model accepts two inputs. One is image of the Paradise Cosmic Beach. You tell what part of it to erase, and then you have a text prompt. It's a spider chip, and the and the model outputs something like a pirate chip on top of your uh, Paradise Cosmic Beach. So here is my colleague Luke sitting by the river, and what we're about to do is called in painting where you mask some parts of the image, for example, the boats, and provide prompt keywords like man sitting by the river at Bruges, river at Bruges, and unicorn sitting by the river at Bruges. This is pretty cool. So that was image and painting. You can also do image out painting and variation generation. So here is a picture of a girl with a pearl earrings. If you were to imagine what's outside the frame of this picture and preserve the style, you can do that. So this particular picture was synthesized by Dali 2. This is called outpainting of an image. You can also do other things like generate variations of an image by seeding the model with the original image. So this was done using stable diffusion, and we'll talk more about this later. So let's take a step back and try to understand how all of this works. Unlike what you might expect at this point, stable diffusion doesn't actually run on magic. It's just a lot of data. It's kind of a latent diffusion model. Let's dig into what that actually means. So you may be familiar with the idea of super resolution. So it's possible to train a deep learning model to denoise an input image and thereby turn it into a high resolution version. The deep learning model doesn't do this by magically recovering the information that's missing from the noisy low resolution input, but rather the model uses the training data distribution to hallucinate the visual details that would most likely be given, given the input. So what happens when you push this idea to the limit? You may start asking, what if we run such a model on pure noise? The model would then denoise the noise and start hallucinating a brand new image 
By repeating the process multiple times, you can turn a small patch of noise into an increasingly clearer and clearer high resolution artificial picture. Now to go from latent diffusion to a text to image system, you still need one key feature that is the ability to control the generated visual contents via keyword prompts. And this is done via conditioning, a classic deep learning technique where you where it consists of concatenating a noise patch with a vector, a bit of vector that represents the text, then training the model on a data set of image caption pairs. So this gives rise to stable diffusion architecture. The stable diffusion consists of three parts, the text encoder, which turns your prompt into a latent vector, a diffusion model, which repeatedly denoises your latent image patch, and a decoder, which turns the final latent patch into a high resolution image. So first, your text prompt gets projected into a latent vector space by the text encoder, which is a simply pre-trained frozen language model. Then the prompt vector is concatenated to a randomly generated noise patch, which is repeatedly denoised by the decoder over a series of steps. So the more steps you run, the more clearer and nicer your image will be. And the default value that's typically used is 50 steps. Finally, the latent image is sent through the decoder to properly render it in high resolution. So how would you use this? Uh, you would simply install Keras CV package and instantiate the stable diffusion model and get creative with the text prompts, which is seven to eight lines of code. And it's going to take three, four seconds to give you an output and and you can have fun with it. Um, aside from the easy to use API, Keras CV stable diffusion comes with some powerful advantages. Uh, you could run the code with graph mode execution. You could enable XLA compilation through JIT compile equals true. And it also supports mixed, pre mixed precision computation. So when these are combined, the Keras CV stable diffusion model runs orders of magnitude faster than your native implementations. So for variation generation, you can switch out the text encoder to an image encoder and seed your model with the original image. So here is an example of Van Gogh's Starry Night. And on the right, what you see are the generated variations of Van Gogh's Starry Night. So you could also teach your model new concepts and it's called textual inversion. Like for example, you can collect few uh, pictures of your object and call it some something like S star. And you could teach your model this new concept and start giving prompts like oil painting of an S star, app icon of an S star, so something like that. And you can do that by collecting some images and adding your new vocabulary and training your data set with this new caption pairs. And a Keras tutorial is coming up for this soon and you 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 can give that a shot. OK, so here is an example of training your model to learn your cat. And you can provide prompts of a photo of any special name you want to call it, maybe Tom, uh, wearing a top hat. It's pretty cool. So I do have a cool demo video. My colleague Ian worked on a hackathon project to auto-synthesize a music video given a song lyrics and timestamps. And the song's name is American Pie. Next slide, please. Okay, so yeah, you can go and watch the whole video on YouTube. Um, so the possibilities are limitless and a lot of uh, more tutorials are coming up to Keras.io page, thanks to the Keras CV team. Uh, so I encourage you to give it a try and showcase how creative you can get with this. So good luck, thank you.